Okay, we're going to start uh, today talking about linear transformations. Um, first, we're going to um, look back at um, uh, something you're familiar with from algebra or calculus. Um, and we'll just look at a, a basic function which uh, typically maps some real number to another real number. So we map the, the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. So for example, um, here's a graph of a function f of x equals x squared. And so um, you um, input a real number, okay, x is a real number, you square it and you get another real number. So it's mapping the real numbers to the real numbers. Here's a little picture view of what's happening. Uh, here you're putting in uh, a real number into your function and, and uh, for our purposes here we know what the function does, it just squares the number, but you really don't have to know exactly what the function does. Um, you uh, know that what comes out though is another real number. So this notation down here at the bottom um, is red, f is a function that maps the real numbers to the real numbers. Um, now let's move to talking about uh, matrix transformations and it's the same basic idea as a function um, it's just defined in terms of a matrix so here T of X, T for transformation uh, so we, we apply our transformation to X we multiply A times X where A is some M by N matrix that defines this transformation so Here's a picture view of what's going on. You have a vector from Rn that is the input to your transformation, and the output is a vector in Rm. Okay, so key here is that A is an M by N matrix, and the transformation occurs by multiplying A times X, so that means that X has to have as many entries as there are columns of A because a times x is just a linear combination of the columns, so we need an x component to match up with each column of A. And then each column of A has m entries, so when we do that linear combination, we're going to end up with a vector with m entries, and hence uh, we end up with a vector in Rm. Okay. So we say that T uh, maps Rn to Rm. So for example, here's a matrix A, and let's suppose that we have transformation T defined uh, on this matrix, so T of X equals A times X. So here's a uh, vector, X equals 2, 1, then T of X is A times X, so we do that multiplication, take linear combination, and we end up with 1, 2. Okay, so we started with a vector in R2 and ended up with a vector in R2, which makes sense since A is 2 by 2. Here's another uh, example. We're applying the transformation to the vector 4, negative 2. So we multiply A times that vector, and uh, so we take a linear combination of the columns of A and end up with negative 2, 4. If we look at uh, it in a general case, so we just apply t to a generic vector x1, x2 from R2, uh, do the same way as we did the previous two, and notice we end up with x2, x1. So this transformation has just reversed the order of the elements. If you look back up at these other two, you know, 2, 1 went to 1, 2, 4, 2 went to the or 4, negative 2 went to negative 2, 4. So that's what all this transformation is doing, swapping the order of the elements <clears throat> in the input vector. Um, if you look graphically at what's going on, um, here's one of the vectors, 2, 1, and here was uh, its transformation, which is 1, 2, and here's the other one, uh, 4, negative 2, which was transformed into negative 2, 4, and so if you can see from this picture that this transformation is uh, reflecting a vector across the line y equals x. Okay? Uh, this is uh, kind of a standard sort of thing that you see in computer graphics, and so um, 
matrix transformations are really the uh, fundamental element in computer graphics. So if you were to go on and take that course in the computer science department, um, you would be seeing a lot of matrix transformations. Okay, so to be a little more precise, we say a transformation T from Rn to Rm is a rule that assigns to each vector x in Rn a vector T of x in Rm. Now, more terminology. Here Rn is called the domain of T, and Rm is called the codomain of T. So Rn is where uh, the inputs to the, to the transformation come from. Rm is where the outputs come from. Okay, for a given x in Rn, T of x is called the image of x. Okay, so the image of x is just the vector that x maps to. If we look at all images, all possible images that we get under uh, the transformation T, this is called the range of T. Okay, so the range of T is all images uh, that we get when we map all possible uh, vectors x uh, through this transformation. Now you might be thinking that, well, isn't that the codomain? And the answer is sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Okay, in general, the range is a subset of the codomain. Um, in some cases they are equal, in others uh, they're not. There are elements of uh, the codomain that are not in the range. So not, in general, not everything in the codomain uh, is mapped to necessarily. Okay, so here's back to our previous example. Um, we've got uh, uh, this transformation maps R2 to R2. So the domain is R2. And uh, really, the do domain is the first set that you see here when uh, you write down the transformation in this fashion. The codomain is also R2, so we're mapping vectors from R2 to vectors in R2 also. Now the range, let's think about that. Now the range, think of the range as just everything that gets mapped to under this transformation. And if you look at the picture, Okay, that we had before, um, you, if you wanted to produce any vector, then you could figure out what vector you need that would map to it because you just need to reverse the order of the elements. So that means that the range of this transformation is all of R2. So the codomain and the range are equal in this case because any vector in R2 is mapped to. All right, uh, let's look at a different example. Okay, here's one defined by a different matrix A, still a 2 by 2 matrix. So this transformation also maps R2 to R2. Okay, so the domain is R2, the codomain is R2. But let's think about what is the range of this transformation. Well, let's play around with it for just a little bit. Um, let's take our uh, old vector 2, 1 and see what it maps to. If we apply the transformation to 2, 1, multiply a times 2, 1, and we end up with a vector 4, 8. Okay, how about another one? Negative 3, 2, a times that vector, take the linear combination, you end up with 1, 2. So let's look at the general case. What happens? If we apply it to just a generic vector x1, x2, do that matrix multiplication, and we end up with this vector, which I can rewrite in this form um, to illustrate that um, the second component of the vector is just uh, twice the first one. And you see that in these other two that we did. Right here, the second component is two times the first. Here, again, second component is two times the first. So if we look at that graphically, um, every uh, vector that we can map to is of this form. Uh, the second component's two times the first, so that's actually all vectors on the line y equals 2x. Okay, second component is two times the first. Because here's 2, 1, and it maps to 4, 8, so it's on this line. Uh, the vector um, 
negative 3, 2, I believe it was, that we looked at, it mapped to 1, 2. So here it falls on the line. So no matter what vector you choose, it's going to be projected onto this line. So the range of this transformation is simply this line, the line y equals 2x, or all vectors of the form uh, x1, 2x1. So we're all vectors where the second component is just 2 times the first. So here, the range is, is not the same as the codomain, right? The codomain is R2, but the range is just uh, this line, y equals 2x, so it's just part of the codomain. Okay, um, suppose uh, at this point we know, um, given a transformation in the matrix that defines it, we can compute T of X, okay? just multiply A times X. Um, a little more difficult question is this one. How do we determine if a given vector B is in the range of a particular transformation? Okay, so we're asking, is there a vector x that maps to b? Or is there a vector x such that t of x is equal to b? And since t of x equals a times x, we can say, does there exist a vector x such that a times x equals b? And now we're back into the realm of looking at systems of equations, um, and we're very familiar with that. Okay, so simply a system of equations to solve. Alright, so let's go back to uh, that previous example. Um, and uh, suppose you were asked, is 612, is this vector 612 in the range of t? And we know that uh, since the range of t is all vectors on the line y equals 2x, then it should be, because the second component, 12, is 2 times the first. So let's solve the system of equations. Alright, here's the augmented matrix corresponding to ax equals uh, B, where B is 612. When we do one row operation, and here we go, uh, it's in echelon form, and clearly the system is consistent. So therefore, um, the vector is in the range of T. How about another one? How about 610? Now in this case, notice the second component is not 2 times the first, so you would expect this vector not to be in the range of T, which would mean that the system should be inconsistent. And as you see, do one row operation, and you end up with 0, 0, and then negative 2. So that's uh, clearly the system is inconsistent. So this vector is not in the range of T. Okay. So to determine if a vector is in the range of a linear transformation, you need to solve a system of equations. OK. Um, Changing gears just a little bit, uh, previously we learned that um, uh, matrix uh, multiplication uh, has uh, certain properties, and one of them is uh, uh, this one, that if you multiply a matrix times the sum of two vectors, then you can distribute, okay? So A times U plus V is equal to AU plus AV. And similarly, if you multiply A times uh, a scalar times a vector, then you can move the scalar out. Okay, so A times CU is the same as C times AU. Okay, now I bring that up because um, that applies here. Okay, so a transformation is said to be linear if the following conditions hold that T of U plus V is T of U plus T of V and t of c times u is c times t of u, okay? So these two conditions look very similar to what we have up there. And in fact, when, since we define uh, our transformation as uh, a times x, then these are really equivalent. Okay, so linear transformations preserve the operations of vector addition and scalar multiplication. And uh, we'll stop here uh, at this point, and uh, then the uh, next video will be for section 1.9, which will include more information on linear transformations.